If you lived in the Flint or Genesee County area in the early 1960s and were one of many auto workers that made your way to work each morning or evening listening to your car radio, you'll undoubtedly fondly remember this man. If you lived in the Flint or Genesee County area in the early 1960s and were one of many auto workers that made your way to work each morning or evening listening to your car radio, you'll undoubtedly fondly remember this man, Bill Lamb, producer and host of the long-running Buick Factory Whistle radio program. From his studios located in the comfort of his own home, Bill produced over 11,000 radio broadcasts featuring interviews with workers of Buick and what they did outside their working hours with the automaker. Besides the Factory Whistle Show, Bill was very active in helping aspiring musicians record and promote their work. In his home studio, hundreds of bands and musicians took advantage of Bill's recording expertise and eight-track facilities to produce their own music for distribution. One of these many success stories even include a single that outsold Bing Crosby's White Christmas. During the holiday season of 1967 and 1968, it was recorded by his own six-year-old daughter, Becky Lamb, and was called Becky's Christmas Wish. Dear Santa Claus, this is the very first time I've ever written to you. All my Christmases have been wonderful, and you gave me lots of nice toys. In a recent visit to Bill's home, we found him still active in the recording industry, expanding his interest into the world of video production. During our visit, we reminisced with Bill about his early days of broadcasting and the inspiration that led to him becoming one of the most popular broadcast personalities in the Flint area. Bill, thanks so much for having us down here at Flint and Del down here Juan, in the studio. I haven't seen you in, <laughs> well, a long time. A couple weeks, I guess. Yes, we've done but some stuff together. I think the last time I saw you, you were right here in this studio. Recording. Recording. You were the recording yeah. artist making yeah. a record. We're down here today, and we're going to talk with Bill Lamb about uh, his career. It has expanded uh, many, many years and uh, is well entertained and a lot of us folks out there have enjoyed you over the years and uh, the factory whistle was a big part of uh, a lot of the folks here at GM and in the surrounding areas and uh, what we want to find out today from Bill is how the factory whistle and how Bill Lamb himself got started in radio and broadcast and all the rest of that. I guess I got interested in radio when I was in high school uh -huh. and that's really what I wanted to do. Yeah. So after three years in the Air Force I came back home and uh, saw they'd opened a new radio station here. So I went over and got a job. And that station was what? W or WMRP, okay. which uh, became uh, WWCK. But it was a good place to start. Yeah. And I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And, and the music of the day back then was what? Uh, was it uh, contemporary? Was it a, a, a big band sound, was it? Or was it the country uh, sound? Yeah, or? it was the, the trailing edge of the big band era. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, there was a period, uh, musically, when uh, the kids didn't want the adults' music, and the adults weren't buying their own music, <laughs> yeah. and the music industry almost died. Yeah. And then rock and roll came yeah. along and revived it. Yeah. Never in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it did. It yeah. revived the yeah. music business yeah. and got things going. Yeah. But, gee, after all oh, these many years, big band music is still around. Yeah, it is. It, and stronger. It's coming back stronger, yeah. I'm told, in a lot of places. Bill, how did the factory whistle? Um, I recall so many, uh, well, so many mornings driving in uh, where I was driving to to work or uh, going to work. Uh, turning the radio dial over there and, and picking up on Bill Lamb, the fact that he was always talking to some folks about their work and uh, interesting subjects. So how did that, how did that spark you? How did it, uh, did you get started with that? Well, rock and roll. Uh -huh. I was on a station that changed format and went all rock and roll and I couldn't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't say that, yeah. but it's just well, that you're being truthful. I guess I'm from another era, yeah. and I didn't like rock and roll, yeah. and uh, I said, I don't think I want to do this. Yeah. So uh, I started looking for something else that I could do that would be more satisfactory, right. and I put together a format, took it over to 
Jerry Rideout, who was public relations director at Buick. And in two weeks, I was working for Buick. Uh -huh. And it was a program that I never tired of. No. Because I, I played adult music, yeah. and I got to visit with some of the most interesting people. Oh, I'll bet. I was just, I was constantly amazed at the variety of things people yeah. did at Buick when yeah. they weren't at Buick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what were, and so how many years, what year did you go on, uh, Factory Whistle? What year did you start 1960. That? And that was, uh, what particular day? That was the day that marks uh, how much? Halloween. Halloween. October 31st was uh -huh. the first program. And you signed off? October 31st, 1984. 84. My gosh. And uh, when, when the Buick factory whistle ended, uh, the union asked if I would do the program uh -huh. for them, uh -huh. and I said, if you get General Motors involved, I would love to. So it became the UAWGM factory whistle for another two years. My goodness. 26 years 26 altogether. years. Yeah. And how many broadcasts? Do you have that down, Glenn? Um, I, I have it on a tape someplace. I believe it was 11,400 broadcasts. My, my, my. That's a lot of them, That's isn't a, it? That is a lot. And, it was, and the program lasted for how long? How long program? Uh, was it an hour program? It was one hour twice a day. Twice a day. Uh, they were different programs, yeah. one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Yeah. And over the years, you have collected records. There are somewhere around 70,000 songs in the 70, library. 70,000. It's a good library. Oh, yeah. It's all filed, yeah. categorized. Yeah. And out of the 70,000 songs, uh, I can find any one of them in about 15 to 20 seconds. He proved that to me, folks. By gosh, I'll tell you why. Because I asked him if he had one of my old records, and it goes <laughs> back a few years, and sure enough, within that 15, 20 seconds, he had it pulled out. Mm -hmm. Bill, what has been the most exciting thing for you over the years of broadcast? Uh, uh, is there anything that stands out? Boy, that's a good question. And I don't know if I could pick out anything. Mm -hmm. I had so many adventures yeah. with it. Um, I got to fly in a P-51 fighter plane oh, yes. uh, because a man of Buick owned one. Yeah. And he took yeah. me up in it, and we did stunting, and that was a thrill. <laughs> uh, I went wing walking on top of an airplane oh, my one time. When I was standing on that wing, the plane hadn't taken off yet, I would probably have climbed <laughs> down again, except my son was standing down there, yeah. and I couldn't climb down in front of him, so I had to go. <laughs> You've got yourself into another world of uh, high-tech uh, video, and you're in a production company. You've got your own production company, and uh, uh, video, what do you, what, what's that called, and what are you, what are you doing well, with that? It's called Bill Lamb Productions. Uh huh. So from the Factory Whistles show, uh, after Bill uh, so-called laid up for put up the microphone, he uh, just couldn't stand idly by. Uh, he had to be involved with something, and this is just another facet of what. Well, when I first on. quit, I got into rebuilding old radios, oh, and yeah. that was kind of yeah. fun. Yeah. And but after you do ten or twelve of those. Uh, it's almost like a yeah. job that isn't yeah. paying you. Right. <laughs> right. And what do you do with 99 right. old radios? Right. So uh, after that, one of my sons talked me into going into video because we had done production. I had written video scripts and commercials and, of all sorts. You've yeah, done throughout I had done a lot of writing, and yeah. uh, so it was kind of a natural. Yeah. So he says, "Let's do it," and we did. Recording. You, you uh, still have folks come in and record here oh, yes. in your studio? Yeah. Okay. I have been blessed, as I think you have, Del, uh, in doing something that you enjoy. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. My philosophy has always been that you sleep one-third of your life. Yeah. And the other two-thirds, half of that, you got to be working. And part of the other part, you're going to be coming or going or eating or something, but over half your life, you're working. Yeah. So you better enjoy it. If it's, doing, if it's something right. that you detest doing, you got a miserable uh, life going. <laughs> and I have thoroughly enjoyed yeah, yeah. all the work I've done. You're, you're retired, but you're doing. You're, you're still. Uh, this takes I like, a lot of time. I like this video stuff. Um, I write the script. Yeah. And uh, usually direct the shooting. Uh huh. And uh, then come in and put it together, and you go from concept, from an idea, idea. to a finished product. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> there you go. Bill Lamb is very much alive. He's not retired. <laughs> Bill, it has certainly been a pleasure to come down here to Flint, Michigan, and to see you, old friend, again, I tell you. And we wish you all the best in the world, 
and I know that uh, it will certainly follow you. Thank you, Dell. It was nice of you guys to come in and visit with me for a little while and let me be on your program. Well, I watch it, and I enjoy it, and it's a thrill to be on your, your get-together. The pleasure is ours, Bill. Thanks again.